So in this short video, we're going to be trying to answer the question, what is a phase diagram? Phase diagrams show the compositions and thermal stabilities of phases within a given system. They're graphs of temperature versus composition. Now, in the systems that we're going to look at in this lecture course, we're going to be looking at binary systems, which means two component systems, mostly. And so in a two component system, we can schematically have our components A and B. So A and B are our two different components. There are three ways, three systems, in which we can define our composition axis. Firstly, some people use atom percent. This is a really nice, simple system, and it makes a lot of sense for simple systems, particularly metallic systems, where you maybe just have a mixture of two different atoms in a, in a system. But it falls down in more complex scenarios, such as when you have uh, inorganic materials, where there's more than one atom present in the system. In this case, it's usually better to use mole percent or mole fraction. So when we use mole percent, the composition of a phase uh, relates directly to its position upon the composition axis. So if we have something that is 50 mole percent B, then it would lie directly in the middle of the composition axis here. The third system is where we can use weight percent. Now weight percent is really nice because it feels really scientific. You're dealing with the formula weights of the, comp of the components and of the composition that you're interested in. And that makes a lot of sense. But it is very hard um, to relate the composition of a material in weight percent to its position on the composition axis here. So for that reason, I generally prefer to use mole percent on my composition axes. Now, the temperature axis here is generally given in degrees C, sometimes in Kelvin. The obvious place for us to start is to look at the simplest example of a phase diagram, which is the eutectic system. Eutectic comes from the Greek word eutectos, which means most easily melted. So in this system, we can start off by drawing on a straight line, an isotherm, line of constant temperature, across the phase diagram from one axis to the other. So below this line, we just have a mixture of two different solids. A plus B in the most simple case. Okay, so this line in green here we would refer to as the solidus and this is the highest temperature at which the system can be completely solid. Above that I'll draw in purple the liquidus line and this line uh, represents the lowest temperature at which the system is completely liquid. So above this line, at all temperatures and all compositions, we just have a single liquid phase. Down here, we just have a mixture of the two solids, A plus B, there's no reaction between them. But in here, we call this the primary phase field of A. So in this region, we have A plus liquid. Over here, we have the primary phase field of B. So in there we have B plus liquid. We can see here the effect of uh, adding an impurity phase to a pure compound. So if you take, for example, pure A, it melts up here at some temperature TA. And this uh, melting point reduces as we add more of the impurity phase, more of B. Similarly, if we look at a component B here, we have some melting point up here, which we can label TB, and we can see that the melting point decreases as we add some impurity A to the system. In the middle here, which I'm marking yellow, at some temperature TE, we have what's called our eutectic point. And the eutectic represents an invariant point where A, B, and liquid all coexist together in equilibrium.